How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. Not just only another review, a little bit of an on-location review. You might see these every now and then. Um, I'm lucky enough to have this absolutely fabulous backdrop at my disposal because, um, you know, people and things and stuff. Uh, my girlfriend, who is pretty fantastic, I'd tell you about her, but she'd kill me if I did. Uh, she uh, lives on a farm in New Jersey. Uh, we actually just uh, went on a little day trip um, in and around New Jersey uh, to grab some beers. And uh, the first place we stopped was Cane. And what I have in front of me is actually two Cane beers I I've never had. And it's been a while since I've done a Cane review. We have their Sneak Box, which is just a small, relatively chuggable, almost sessionable, if you count ABV as sessionable, uh, pale ale. And we have the double dry hopped version of that. Went down there, um, got there about 20 minutes before they opened, went in. These were on sale. I bought them. Now I'm talking about them. It's called science. So here we go. Let's dive into it, see what she's got. As far as the base is concerned, we have uh, Cane Brewing Company Sneak Box American Pale Ale. It's 5.4% alcohol by volume. Do they have story time on here? No, they do not. Uh, on the dry hopped version, they have uh, Cane Brewing Company Double Dry Hop Sneak Box, 5.4%, same ABV. Yada yada, all the same. Uh, this was canned 622. Today is, I think, 622, or maybe yesterday was. I don't know. And this one was 614. So there's not a big difference as far as time goes. Uh, actually, it's probably a matter of how long they took dry hopping it was probably the difference in the beers that are probably relatively close. Uh, Label-wise, uh, Sneakbox is pretty freaking cool. This was called something else. I forget what it was called, but they changed the name to this because there was some R&D shit going on. Um, but label's cool. You know, red. Um, gradients of red. A little bit of graphics in the background. And this one's your uh, hipster sticker can. You know what I mean? So two beers, one base, one dry hopped. Let's have at it. Let's see what she's got. Take these big Duvel tulips. That were on location. That's how awesome this place is. Not only do you have this fabulous view to look at, this gorgeous face to look at, you actually uh, have a place where I can have dual Duvel tulips, not cuvee glasses, some people call it that, um, to actually use at my disposal. So that'll be pretty freaking cool. Anyway, let's see if we can get it at a proper dual pour here. Uh, and let's see. And that one goes, that one goes. Let's stop there. Horrible pours, but, you know, such is life. We'll put that one there. We'll put that one there. Hopefully they're on camera. If they're not, then meh, meh, meh. Anyway, um, yeah. Head-wise, they're pretty equal. Uh, Color-wise, they're pretty on spot. This one actually looks a hint yellow, more yellowish. Uh, over here in the double dry hopped version, or the extra dry hopped. Let's go that way. I hate using double dry hopped. Um, this one's uh, dissipating a little bit quickly, a little bit quicker. Um, but at the same time, again, not scientific pours here. But they all both look just about the same. Again, this one just, if I were to really say if there's any difference whatsoever, microns of darkness difference. This one's just a little bit darker, and that's, that'd be that. So, yeah. Uh, let's see if we can get a nose on this while the helicopter flies by because, you know, that'll help with the nose. You know, it'll kind of circulate the air, wafting around, all that kind of fun stuff. So the base. Stinky dankness. A little bit of stinky, stinky dankness. A little bit of stinky uh, weed slash pull weeds out of the ground. So you're talking about smoking weed and you're talking about actually pulling weed kind of combination going on there it's a little bit warmer than i'd like it to be probably pushing right around 50 degrees it's not right around 45 but it definitely what it's worth a little bit of sticky dankness a lot of vegetal kind of greenness a little bit of tomato stockiness a little bit of sweetness but it's definitely hop forward there's a nice kind of funkiness to it i actually think there's a little bit of more kind of uh, yeasty fun going on here than just base hops and malts but yeah, it definitely smells like a garden. Like if you've ever been in a garden planting um, a lot of like um, uh, stocky vegetables, like, you know, tomatoes and things like that, it's that kind of smell going on. So double dry hop version. I'm honestly going to say not that big of a difference on the nose. Hopefully all that extra hopping is in there for flavor reasons. I mean, you know, talk about dry hopping at the end, so we'll see what's what. But, yeah, 
I would say a little bit less danky. You know, if you're talking about extra dry hopping, you're usually talking about the nose being that much more bonkers. But this one just doesn't come off that way for me. Same nose, almost to a T, just a little bit less vibrant. Is that going to show up in a beer? Only one way to find out. Let's dive into the base. Very similar taste um, based off the nose. A little bit of kind of hot burn there. Definitely on that kind of like danky, weedy um, weed, both pulling weed and smoking weed, kind of vegetal-ish kind of side of hops. Not super fruity, not super juicy. More bitter, but in a new school kind of weed, multiple weed. Weed square. Let's go weed square in this one kind of way. Nice mouthfeel, a little bit of hot burn. Nice beer, especially it's ABV. You're talking about, what is it, 5.4 did I say? It definitely tastes bigger than that. Tastes like it's going to be a more robust kind of IPA. So let's dive into this double dry hopped version. Kind of smaller of a beer even hop wise i mean this beer is you know supposedly this beer with extra hopping and it, honestly it just doesn't show it tastes like a slightly older version than the base sneak box the hot presence is the same. The malt base is the same. The mouth feels the same. It just one just tastes like it's older. It tastes like it's a little bit more muted, a little bit smaller of a beer. And that's kind of a super bummer. I am admittedly a Kane Homer. I love their beers. And I still enjoy these beers. Um, they're quite tasty. I'm not going to shun either of these and push these into a realm that um, I don't drink them. Is that like I almost got into like a weird kind of like... RPG kind of thing there. I'm going to be like, I will zap these into a different dimension. No, um, they're good beers. They're delicious. I enjoy them. I enjoy them both. But when you're putting them side by side, this one is supposed to be, when you're talking about double dry hopping, again, if you want to hear funny commentary on, on that, go to uh, Steal This Beer, uh, Augie Carton from Carton Brewing to Steal This Beer. Go there. Listen to me talk about double dry hopping. It's pretty, pretty hilarious. Last several episodes is a running joke. Um, double dry hopping doesn't mean much of anything. It just actually is just um, an arbitrary number they're throwing out there to tell you that there is extra hopping. And that's basically what this is trying to say. That this beer has extra hops. Um, so it, it'll be this plus crazy more robust hopness. And that's just not the case here. At least for me. These beers were kept in the same environment, removed from the brewery about six hours ago. In a cooler on ice. Again, 50 degrees, not 45, 42 degrees. Take that for what it's worth. But, um, yeah, it's nice. They're both delicious beers, but this one doesn't really show much, if anything, in, um, in the form of extra extra hopping, extra dry hopping. Uh, but still pretty, pretty tasty beers. And... Uh, they will not be drain poured, let's put it that way. But at the same time, if you're looking to pick these up, if this is something you covet, um, in a can version, I, I, I definitely go to the base sneak box uh, because the uh, that one is just uh, kind of lacking, especially compared to the uh, to the base. So there you go. Uh, let's talk about it. Are these some of the better American pale ales? Sub six percent American pale ales that I've had as of late. Uh, with all that being said, me sounding like I'm poo-pooing all over it, I would say yes. Um, they work for me. Uh, you know, King isn't known for going ape shit with their hops. They're more about balance and they're more about, more about um, um, complexity through, um, through uh, simplicity. I say that with a kind of soft hand because I'm not trying to say they're just basic bitches. No, they know what they're doing. And these, to me, kind of work. 
as far as I'm concerned. They're giving me what I want from the hot presence, from the yeast presence, from the sweetness. The balance is nice. They're not overly sweet. They're not sugar bombs. The hops aren't just crazy combination of crazy hops and crazy sweetness. So both of them are great. I'm just saying I like this one better. Value and availability, I don't. I bought a bunch at the same time and didn't check my... Thing. I'm gonna start doing the val. I'm gonna say value and availability, just not when I buy them, because I never remember what I paid for shit. So take that for what it's worth. Brewery only, I know that, and just say if you like what we like this. If you like, honestly, these aren't Belgian beers, but if you like Belgian IPAs and you wish you got a little bit more kind of oomph to your to your um, to your Belgians, um, the way Kane used their yeast profile and how they push their beers, they tend to come off very Belgian esque, even if they're not classified as Belgian. Way more, I shouldn't even say Belgian, way drier, way more yeast uh, oriented than a lot of other breweries. These aren't um, flowered. Um, these aren't uh, propped up with a lot of different things. They're just the yeast is carrying the day on these. The yeast is propping the hops up here, and the malt is balancing everything off to make a really delicious beer. So while I think the double dry hop version of the sneak box doesn't live up to what it should be based off the base, they're still pretty good beers. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, didn't, anywhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. If you like the new backdrop, drop, drop, it's called drop, words, drop, let me know. I might do more here. You don't know. You don't know. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there you go. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying some nice double dry hop sneak boxiness in your lives. And uh, hopefully see you next time. Cheers.